Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. I am super excited because today we are starting up a new study walking through the book of Galatians. I've had a few people reach out to me and ask me if I was planning on teaching through books of the Bible, and I had been planning on doing so already. I have done it in the past, and so thank you for motivating me to get around to it. And I thought we would start with the book of Galatians. Before we even get into our first five verses, I want to give some helpful overview of the book of Galatians itself. So this would have been one of the earliest books written in the New Testament. We're not sure the exact date, but probably sometime around AD 48 or 49. It was written by the Apostle Paul to the churches uh, in Galatia. But I would say the major theme for the book is justification by faith. We're going to see as we go through the book that these false teachers, the Judaizers, had infiltrated the church and they were teaching people that in order for you to be right with God, in order for you to be justified, you not only had to have faith in Jesus, you also had to be circumcised. You were adding to that works, things that you must do to contribute to your salvation. That is a different gospel, and the Apostle Paul is speaking very strongly against that. So the Apostle Paul is confronting false teaching, and he is pointing people to the fact that they are justified by faith. He is calling for them to live in that freedom, and later he will call for them not to use that freedom as an excuse to sin, but to use that freedom to obey God and to do what he would have us to do. Okay, guys, so we are starting today with the first five verses of Galatians 1. I'm going to read through the passage, and I will stop a few times along the way to point some things out. So here we go in verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with me to the churches of Galatia. So we need to remember that the book of Galatians was originally a letter written from the Apostle Paul to a church, to, to the churches in Galatia. So this is just an introduction to the letter. Paul introduces himself. Uh, people would have known who the Apostle Paul was. But then he has this pretty interesting section here where he says, an apostle not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father. So what is happening? Is Paul boasting? Is he saying, look at me, I'm special, I'm an apostle, and I was chosen by Jesus Christ himself? No, the Apostle Paul is not boasting. We need to remember that throughout the duration of his ministry, Paul was constantly dealing with false teachers, people who were speaking against him and his ministry, and oftentimes people were trying to uh, get others to question the credibility or the legitimacy of of Paul's ministry. And so we have the same thing happening here in the book of Galatians. Paul is going to be addressing uh, the false teachers and some of their teaching. And of course, they are trying to undermine his work. And so they're saying, hey, he's a self-appointed apostle. He's just calling himself an apostle and talking about how special he is. No. So the apostle Paul is saying, no, I'm an apostle, not because I appointed myself, not because any other human being appointed me, but God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, appointed me to be an apostle. So he's saying, listen, I have authority. I am legitimate, but I'm not boasting. He's not uh, holding it over people. He's just saying, listen, if you're going to call my credentials into question, here are my credentials. And he is only doing this out of necessity. You see this numerous times with Paul throughout his ministry. He doesn't like boasting and bragging about himself, but when these false teachers are questioning his legitimacy, he will bring up some of his credentials just to shut them down. So certainly it seems like that is what is happening here. So he was appointed an apostle by the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, of course, it now talks about God the Father um, who raised him from the dead. So we're already pointing towards Jesus and towards his work on the cross and all the brothers who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Really interesting if you do a study about uh, Galatia, you will see that people aren't even 100% sure which Galatia is being referenced here. There were actually two Galatias at the time that Paul was writing. Both of them were in modern Turkey. One was in the north, and it was a people group, the Galatians, and then there was a Roman province in the south, the province of Galatia. There's good reason to think he's probably writing to the southern province, uh, the Roman province there, but 
you know, honestly, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to uh, greatly change how we interpret or understand the book, but Galatia would likely be in the southern part of modern-day Turkey. So let's go here now uh, in verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. So in the first two verses, Paul has already drawn attention to the work of Christ. It's talking about um, God raising Jesus from the dead. By the way, side note, you may have noticed this before in Scripture. If you say, well, who raised Jesus from the dead? Scripture actually says the Father raised him from the dead, he raised himself from the dead, and the Spirit raised him from the dead. The Trinity was involved in the resurrection. But now Paul is pointing even more towards the work of Christ, a precursor for what he's going to talk about a little bit later. So it's grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And now he's saying Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age. And this was according to the will of our God and Father. And that's why in verse 5, now that he's been talking already just a little bit about the work of Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. The Lord Jesus Christ, he gave himself for our sins. We need to glorify him. We need to praise him for what he has done. But I also love in verse 4, where it says he gave himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age. When it talks about the evil age, it's not necessarily talking about a period of time. It is talking about the evil world system. We even still, this day as believers, are living in an evil world system. The world system at large is not godly, is not promoting kingdom values. But Jesus came to rescue us from that. I would say both in a sense uh, of in the present, that we do not have to live according to the standards of this world. We don't have to be swept up with everything that is taking place within that evil system. But in an ultimate sense, we are going to be delivered when we are with Christ forever in eternity. And there will be no presence of sin at all. So he has delivered us. He has saved us from our sins and he is going to remove us totally from sin, from our own personal sin, from the evil world age. He did this and he did it according to the will of our God and Father. This was not something that just came about. This is something that had been ordained since before time. God was going to take on flesh and come, live a perfect life and die a sacrificial death on behalf of the world. What an amazing truth. So this is just the introduction to the letter, but already we have reason to celebrate. We have reason to praise, but with our next video, we are going to see that uh, things kind of turn south quickly because the Apostle Paul has some really big problems with the things that are being taught in the Galatian church, but we'll get to that next time. All right, guys, I hope this teaching today was a blessing to you in your walk with the Lord. I look forward to the rest of our study as well. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date with all the teaching that is coming out. Also, please remember that you can partner together with me financially in ministry as I have profiles on both Ko-fi and Patreon. I'll put links to both of them in the description. You can give a one-time gift or sign up for monthly recurring donations. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, God bless.